Well, Stephen, I find myself somewhat in awe, both as one of the world's most distinguished scientists, but also a physicist, where physics is in some sense a sort of senior science. I mean, the, the bedrock of all other sciences. I'm a mere biologist. I suppose biology has the complexity, but physics has the fundamentals. Of course, we physicists feel that way, but we're much too polite to say so. <laughs> yes. Um, it has been said that uh, whereas most um, distinguished scientists tend not to be religious believers, um, there's a slight tendency for biologists to be even more atheistic I've than physicists. That, yes. You have heard that. Do you, what do you make of that, if anything? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps it's just that biologists have bloodied their knuckles so much fighting over evolution that they've become a little bit more militant. And um, I think physicists perhaps tend to, um, since they hope that they're approaching some ultimate understanding of the laws of nature, uh, they tend to use God as a metaphor for that. Einstein famously did. Uh, Hawking has, um, without necessarily meaning very much by it. Um, that's been al always my impression, that, that, that most physicists who say they're religious, if you actually probe a bit deeper, it turns out that they're religious in the Einsteinian sense. Yes. Um, but you, pr you pr probably know some genuinely, I mean genuinely Christian or genuinely Jewish who really, really do believe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I know a, a number of general relativists for some reason, people who work in Einstein's general theory of relativity, uh, who are devoutly religious. Uh, I don't know why that in particular. I knew uh, one astrophysicist who said he was an Orthodox Jew but didn't believe in God. Yes. I mean, nobody ever says they're an Orthodox Christian but <laughs> don't believe in God. <laughs> well, that, I mean, because Judaism puts so much more of an emphasis on uh, observance as compared to belief that it makes sense in a way. I think Hinduism, in that sense, is like Judaism, that what's much more important is the dietary rules and the keeping various Sabbaths and holidays. Uh, you're honoring a tradition, and in Judaism, nobody ever catechizes you about what you believe. Uh, in fact, uh, obviously many of my friends are Jewish, and. Uh, I've asked them what they understand about the afterlife, and they don't have the foggiest idea. Yeah. It's not part of the official religion to have a definite idea about yes. the afterlife. I mean, I think it's very also, different from Christianity. Yes, and I think also in Judaism there's a, a tradition of continual questioning, isn't there? Continuing sort of e examining and turning your beliefs over and... I suppose so, yeah. yes. The Talmudic tradition. Um, of course, Christianity is more like Islam in that way. It's really important that you believe in specific things and um, you're likely to get killed by someone if you don't believe the right thing. Particularly someone of almost the, the same religion. Yeah, that's but, right. That's but right. Uh, but not, not quite. Um, the, w whenever I'm asked sort of what's the most convincing evidence you could think of, if, which would really convince you that there is some kind of a supernatural being, uh, I think once upon a time, uh, say in the time of William Paley, uh, biology was, all, was, was, was it, because mm. the, the, the prodigious complexity of life, the beauty of it, the, the, um, the sheer intricacy and the stunning illusion of design which living things uh, project. Paley himself said, said um, I think something like, um, the heavenly bodies are not best fitted to demonstrate the existence of the creator. You know what, it, I think that's just an accident of the time that Paley lived, uh, because at that time the physical scientists had done a good job of explaining the solar system, um, although there were still things that were not well understood. But, you know, you go back earlier, everything seemed to require a divine explanation. Even Newton uh, thought that um, although he could account for the way the planets moved, um, and the tides and the fall of fruits, um, he could not account for the fact that there was a difference between dark matter and light matter, uh, between the sun and the planets. And in a letter to Bentley, he uh, said that that was the sort of thing that required divine um, intervention to explain why the sun shone and the planets did not. Nevertheless, the eye as the instrument that sees things with sunlight uh, 
surely Newton would have regarded that as even more of an evidence of the divine, wouldn't he? I, I don't know. I don't know. Ever, I don't know that he ever speculated about that. He had great hopes for a unification of all the sciences in terms of various forces acting on corpuscles of matter. Uh, I don't know how far he went in, in thinking of that that would apply to living things. That's an interesting question. I, doubtless Newton scholars could tell us, but I don't, I don't know the answer. Yes. But it, it's, um, it's true that uh, by the early 19th century, uh, when Paley wrote, the outstanding problem that seemed to require a divine explanation was the problem of life. And um, I believe Cardinal Manning, at least this is what I learned from Lytton Strachey's biography of him, uh, Cardinal Manning uh, became a de devout Christian by reading Paley's book. He was so convinced. Well, Darwin himself was. I mean, Darwin yeah. himself read Paley as an undergraduate oh, at, I didn't know at that. Cambridge. Uh, well, they all had to, but Darwin yeah. was particularly impressed by it. And, and uh, I think on the Voyage of the Beagle, he probably thought that what he was seeing when he roamed through the Brazilian jungle and things was, was evidence of, of um, God. But although it's often said that it was Darwin who finally killed that kind of pa Paleyism, and I think that's probably right, Nevertheless, even before Darwin came along, it, it's never seemed to me to be a very logically co coherent argument. I could have imagined, indeed, as David Hume did, that before Darwin came along, one would have said, well, I don't understand where this illusion of design comes from, but a supernatural designer doesn't help. We're still left with a, with a, with a mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, and so although it's very nice that Darwin did come along and actually answer the question, even before Darwin came along, we didn't actually, so to speak, need him in order to reject the idea of a supernatural designer. We physicists are somewhat in that position because we hope for a uh, set of very simple laws of nature that will account for everything we see, but when we have them, there will always be a question, well, why those laws. Exactly. And many people say, in fact, a, a Jesuit has argued to me that that's where God comes in, that God ordained the laws and he is the ultimate explanation. And of course, the, the response to that is, well, you know, what, uh, have you really helped at all with that? Uh, what explains God? Uh, what explains why God is the way God is? Uh, if, you, if you have some specific understanding of that three-letter word, G-O-D, uh, then you have the mystery, why is God that way rather than some other way? And if you don't have any specific understanding of what you mean by, I hear the thunder, I hope he's not getting annoyed with it. <laughs> um, if you don't have any uh, specific understanding of what you mean by G-O-D, uh, then what are you talking about? Yes, quite. <laughs> then, it, then it's just an empty word. I suppose a biologist would put an additional spin on that, which is not just why is God this way rather than that way, but in order to do what he's supposed to be doing, which is, say, ordaining the laws of physics, to say nothing of forgiving our sins and listening mm -hmm. to our prayers and things, he would have to be a, a complex entity, which is exactly the kind of entity that we are setting out to explain, and which Darwin, in fact, does explain. And so, in a way, um, Darwinian, the Darwinian theory raises our consciousness to the fact that any god worthy of the name would have to be much more yeah. complicated than an eye or a brain or a, or a heart. And therefore, particularly, uh, I love this, this is really great, uh, p particularly demanding of mm. just the kind of explanation which he purports to provide. Yes, once in the, just to change the subject for a moment, uh, once in a debate about this sort of thing, uh, someone in the audience said, uh, uh, your view of that there isn't any God is not falsifiable. And I said, yes, it is falsifiable. A bolt of lightning could come <laughs> down and strike me dead, on, and then it would, my view would be falsified. Yeah. And I suppose listening to the thunder yeah, uh, reminds me of that. But going back to what we were saying, yes, uh, uh,